Update 25 has a scheduled date to go live now and the Daily Ops Rewards system is changing. Let's not forget about how display cases will be added to shelters and so much more. It's news time! Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In the last couple of days, news started raining. It has been so overwhelming and exciting at the same time. Sadly, I couldn't cover them sooner due to my 50k sub celebration stream yesterday, but nevertheless, here we are to cover everything related to 76. In this one, I'm going to address all the latest public test server news I have gathered from the past days, mostly changes and announcements from Bethesda's part about update 25, of course. I know there are a lot more news related to the live servers, but I'm leaving all of that for the next news. Alright, with that being said, let's get into what matters, starting with Update 25's release date. Update 25 is live for testing on the public test server for over a week now, and many of you have been asking me about when will it go live in the official servers, special from console players. Well, a few days ago I couldn't answer this, but now I can. Bethesda announced yesterday through Twitter that Update 25 is going live on the last week of January, on the 26th to be precise. It's a Tuesday as well, which means we are getting a full update and the weekly Atomic Shop update together in one single day. What's changing with the first update of 2021 though? Well, there's a lot of quality of life changes, improvements, bug fixes and Fashnacht Day is returning too. Daily Ops are also getting a few changes, the essential patch notes are already public on Bethesda's forums, but if you wish to learn more, then go ahead and check my other video where I go over 15 changes coming with update 25. Now, keep in mind more changes might be added before January 26. After all, we just got a small update a few days ago, which introduced some more changes to update 25. So, you never know, anything could still happen until the final patch is ready to get released. As I just mentioned, Daily Ops got some major changes a few days ago on the public test server. The latest patch notes were not part of the initial patch, which went live last week. That's why I didn't cover it until date. Basically, there are three main changes. The first one will benefit everyone. They are basically increasing your chance to get a rare or uncommon plan from 80% to 100% in Elder Mode. This means you no longer will come out of an operation empty-handed in terms of plans. The existing 20% to get no plan in the live servers is about to be part of the past, and that's amazing. At long last, it was really about time. Anyway, there's more. Bethesda also plans to fix the existing bug where all reward tiers might show as auto-completed for the day when you haven't done any daily ops since the daily reset, preventing you from getting any plants. This bug fix should fully solve the non-rewards problem, but you never know, things might not go as planned. It's Fallout 76 after all, bugs are an essential part of the game at this point, sadly. But for now, let's assume the problem will be indeed get fixed for good with such changes. Now, the last point is about duplicated rare plans. Bethesda wants to force the system to roll again whenever you trigger a rare plan which you have already learned. So, in theory, you should always be able to loot a new rare plan when your loot strikes in the rare plan category, which is the one with all the gear plans, the Brotherhood gear and so on. The system now has 11 leveled rewards and the reward flags should be working as intended, but again, we will need to test to understand if that's really true. As several data miners explain, this system should benefit everyone as well and make the entire plan farming system much, much easier. I mean, your chances to loot new rare plans will increase drastically with the less plans you actually need, 
because think with me, your chances to get one exact plan from let's say 25 are way less than getting one exact plan from the five remaining plans you still need to get and learn, right? I'm really looking forward to testing such changes. And if it really works, we are about to get a system where we can easily get all these Brotherhood rare gear plans in no time. It won't take months anymore, so keep your fingers crossed, let's hope for the best. Ever since the Fallout Shelter system went live, players have been asking Bethesda to please add the display case category, which would basically change everything when it comes to building. I mean, there are hundreds if not thousands of items you can add to display cases, and even the opportunity to build shelters based on a certain theme or topic, which can be reinforced by display case items. Anyway, after a few months of silence regarding this topic, Jeff Gardiner, the project lead for 76, has announced that display cases are coming to shelters in the future. The decision has been made already and this change is coming to the game, hopefully in the first quarter of 2021. It's definitely not coming with update 25 though, as he specified, but it will come with another future update for sure. Well, that's amazing news, especially for you builders and museum curators out there. Now, all we have to do is wait with a lot of patience until that day comes. Alright, this next point is something a bit unexpected. I talked about this news firsthand in my livestream yesterday. Basically, last week data miners discovered this pre-made tank in the game files and we all assumed it was just another standard atomic shop pre-made item for your camp. Well, it's not really the case. Sure, it's still an atomic shop entry, but it's a skin instead of a pre-made item. A skin, yes, for the survival tent. It's actually a new entry for Fallout First members, which will be released in the upcoming months. Bethesda is basically reworking the entire survival tent concept for this skin with new assets and new skins. It's called the APC Army skin, and data miners have already discovered other assets which will be included in this tent, such as this new military skin for the scrap box. There's even a few showcase images, as you can see. The military badge should be inside the tank, and it looks like this as well. Moving forward, data miners also discovered other assets that will come with this tent skin, such as a standard tinker bench and a cooking station. Now, that's really new. Never before we had a crafting bench in any tent. Well, until now, of course. The curious part here is that there is no stash box or any instrument included in the list, at least not yet. This either means they are still working on the skin assets or, well, they are replacing all the existing items with other entries. They might not include the usual items we are used to see in a regular survival tent. Just saying. Anyway, Wally Time will provide the answer here. The Friendly Fire perk is getting some major changes with Update 25 as well. I have recently tested this perk on both live servers and the public test servers to compare the different results, which I gathered in a recent video, by the way, which features 8 changes being added to this Charisma perk with the upcoming patch. I don't want to repeat myself too much here, so feel free to watch the video if you wish to learn all the details. For now, I can do a quick overview on what's changing. Basically, all melee weapons with fire mods will be able to heal friendly players and NPCs with the friendly fire perk. Ranged weapons with a fire or flaming mod, such as a bow or the Chimera pistol, will also be able to heal friendly players with direct hits, but not NPCs. However, ranged weapon bash hits using a fire mod can heal both players and NPCs. It's true magic, nobody can understand such change, but oh well. Lastly, molotovs, which should be one of the main exceptions, it's even written in the perk itself, no molotovs. 
Yeah, about that. Well, they do work and they can provide an area of effect by healing many friendly NPCs at once. It doesn't work on players though, it's another act of 76 magic. At least players will have more diversity when it comes to healing friendly targets. So that's a plus. All in all, that's basically what's coming for the friendly fire perk with update 25. One of the new changes coming to your inventory with the next update is literally the new tab, but there are a few things that make very little sense there. As the player reported very well, newly scrapped items will not always show in this new tab, even though you have literally just looted them by scrapping junk or gear. Now, Bethesda came forward to clarify how this new tab works regarding scrap. Basically, if you already have a stack of junk in your inventory, the next time you loot more of the same junk will just be added to the stack you have. And only the total amount shows up in your new stab, the same as your scrap tab, as shown in my little test here. It merges old scrap with a new one in the same stack, so it's not possible to know how much new scrap you have just gathered if you already have a stack of that same junk. I know it sounds a bit confusing, but it's actually very, very simple and it doesn't make sense. I mean, the new tab should divide stacks and show you only what's truly new, what you have just looted, right? Not the entire stack, which contains all the new looted scrap. Anyway, Bethesda also said the Q&A team is going to look into the matter to make sure everything is working as intended. So let's hope they manage to give some sense into all of this. The next point is something I have talked about in my latest news, but as they enable treasure hunters in the public test server, but they haven't added anything new to test. No new rewards, no new rules, no changes, nothing, really. So we were all wondering why were they added in the first place and with good reason. Well, it seems like Bethesda wanted to do a quick performance check before the event returns to the live server's next mount. That's basically all there is into it. In fact, Bethesda has already disabled treasure hunters from the testing build, they can no longer spawn, and right now you are not able to find or farm them anymore. So we can assume whatever they had to test in terms of performance, it's now done and complete. I just wanted to let you know. Moving forward, I saw a very interesting PTS suggestion about adding a learnable plan indication to the player vending machine interface to let players know if a specific machine has new plans for sale that you don't have yet. That way we wouldn't have to check everyone's selling plans searching for the very few ones we are missing. Another player even made a quick sketch of this idea to exemplify how it should look like in the interface. I think this would be a true quality of life improvement change, that's why I added it here in the first place. Anyway, Bethesda seems to share the same opinion with me. A community manager said they will discuss this idea in a future meeting, so who knows, maybe we will really get to see this awesome addition to the vending machine interface in a future patch. I surely hope we do. Ay, 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 where do I even start here? In my 15 changes for update 25 video, I mentioned that Fashna is going to get a few new bugs and that's really noticeable if you test the event on the PTS. Now, some bugs might not be brand new, they are just kind of rare and that's probably why me and many other players haven't seen such bugs before, just maybe. However, on my experience, I have been seeing a lot of new bugs, they are new to me at least, such as the frogs not spawning at all in the first wave of the event. Dozens are supposed to spawn, but sometimes only a couple will spawn, it's very, very strange. Another bug I have spotted is the Fashna robots not responding to you, and here the egg robot was missing to be discovered. I clicked on him at least a dozen of times, but it never registered. My teammate had to come to get the system to work, so if I was soloing the event here, I would end up with a frozen bugged event. So pleasant, huh? Anyway, another bug and a much worse one is this new or old bug 
where the Fashna robots can go out of their route. They just walk around, you know, in small trips around the event area. Some even take the road heading to another location. Like, seriously? This can keep the event paused or even fail it if the bugged robot doesn't return to its original path. I actually saw a robot standing at a mail house for minutes and the event was stuck for that same period of time. Thankfully, this time he debugged himself somehow and things returned back to normal. But I've seen reports where players say the robots just go missing and the event doesn't go on, so this can be a heavy and game-breaking bug at times. Anyhow, let's proceed. Another bug fix coming with update 25 is regarding the law of flamingos and the wooden desk plans. These two standard plans got bugged with update 24 and many players lost the ability to craft them, as if the characters suddenly learned or forgot their respective plans. Good for us, this plan is not very difficult to find again, but imagine this bug starts affecting other plans, especially the rare ones. That would be really, really upsetting, to say the least. Well, let's hope that won't happen again, since Bethesda is releasing a fix for this bug with the upcoming patch. The last news I have for you today is regarding the PTS Penance. In a previous video, I mentioned that I don't think there is a new reward for testing update 25. I mean, there was no announcements anywhere at the time, so I just assumed the obvious, but now we have a confirmation from Bethesda's part, which clarifies any doubt. A community manager answered my forum post to let us know there are no new penance or rewards planned for the first testing of 2021. Volsik also said if you haven't received your previous penance when you have fulfilled the requirements, you should submit a support ticket. So, there you go. As usual, to finish off, I have another random bug to show you. This time it's something basic, but since I never mentioned this before, here we are. Basically, every time I log into the PTS servers and then return to the official servers, all my known basic emotes get unequipped. So every time I log back, I have to manually equip all my emotes one by one. It doesn't happen to everyone, I know, but to me, it does, almost every time. It's really, really frustrating, and I'm not sure why we don't have a button to simply equip every emote we own at once. It can't be that hard to add, right? Right. Uh, anyway, just wanted to vent a bit about this one. This is actually a very old bug, but a very annoying one nonetheless. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I could keep you up to date with everything Fallout 76. We have reached 50k subscribers a few days ago and I did a live stream yesterday to celebrate with giveaways, with Q&A. So if you were around, thank you for that. I hope you enjoyed. If you missed it, don't worry, you can still watch it, the VOD is on my channel right now. Well, now it's time to wrap things up, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support my channel, and a special recognition to all my supporters, you guys rock! Alright, that's it for now, stay safe, I will see you all very very soon in the next video. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!